Bringing home a puppy is a cause for celebration, but Alicia Spivey from University Veterinary Hospital is here to make sure that during that excitement, we don't overlook an important health factor. Dr. Spivey, thank you so much for joining Hi. me. Thank you. So we're talking about the Parvo virus, or you may know it at home as Parvo. What do we need to know about this virus? Uh, so Parvo virus is actually something that's been around since the 1970s. It's found in the environment. It's very, very difficult to kill. And infected animals shed those particles in very high numbers. So essentially, it's everywhere. And your puppy being in those areas definitely can uh, be cause for concern. So immediately when I think that it's been around since 1970, it's resistant. Is this something that's deadly? Is it getting stronger? There's different strains. Kind of tell us about this. Absolutely. So uh, different. there are different strains or different severities of each individual virus and that uh, that virus the severity depends upon how well uh, your pet can survive that uh, as well as very aggressive early care um, you want to have them on IV fluids they can't absorb nutrients they can't absorb fluids they need IV antibiotics because they can't fight off infection because this virus actually attacks the bone marrow itself um, and it attacks the intestinal lining so they die of overwhelming infection dehydration and shock and that's what I want to talk about. If they do contract this virus and we want to get it early, what symptoms and signs are we looking for? Uh, the first few things that you're going to notice, they actually don't have signs until about a week after they're infected. Um, and that's how they actually shed this virus so much. They become weak, a little lethargic. They might not want to eat, um, vomiting, and then diarrhea. And that diarrhea becomes bloody. Um, and that's an indication that that intestinal lining is compromised. And the biggest thing with this is preventative care. So how do we prevent this virus? So very young puppies are protected by their mom's immunity. They have antibodies, but as they get older, those antibodies get lower and lower. So what we need to try to do is to vaccinate them to build their own immune system. And that can't be done with just one vaccination, however. You really have to follow through with multiple different sets to get that long-term um, protection with the vaccinations. And I have to come out and say this, I just got a cute little German Shepherd puppy, <laughs> and they said they had already been vaccinated, but I found out this was just a pet store one that you just buy, generic version. You're saying that's, that's not good enough. Well, it's that you you need repetitive vaccinations. Just the one won't do it. You need to supplement them every three to four weeks until they're about 16 weeks of age so that they're truly protected long term. And, and real quickly, you talked about this briefly. It's called the puppy virus. But what happens if you have a dog that's old and we realize, hey, it's never been vaccinated? What do we do? Um, they are always at risk and you definitely want to have them vaccinated as well. They do get some inherent immunity just through exposure because again, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, it's their immune system of that individual animal that can kind of make the difference. But I would always have them vaccinated. A lot of great information. Dr. Spivey, thanks Absolutely. so much. Thank you. And we're going to have that information on our website, arclitexhomepage.com after the show, so check it out there. We're